When we're children, we will play with bricks and blocks because that's how we imagine. And we use those to create visions within our own mind and to make them physical, make them into real things. This is my work. <laughs> You're saying, like, what can this small object contain? We would take clay dug from the borough and show people how to process it. Um, it's here underneath us and around us at all times and show them how to transform that into something that you can then leave your mark on, that you can create something with. Hi, I'm Georgia Hazeldean and I'm the Victoria and Albert Museum's Public Engagement Fellow. My name is Dr Lynn McCarthy and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Applied Performance at the University of East London. Brickfield Newham for me is a chance for us to investigate um, the similarities between making, um, making with clay and making performance with our bodies. So the question of brickfields arose and the the question of communities who had been working around the brickfields of London historically, and a lot of those communities were traveller communities and nomadic communities, um, women and children, people of low income, um, because the work around the brickfield sites were very, very harsh. So the digging out of the clay and the, the mixing of it, the, the forming of a brick, um, and then how that built our city historically was something that we all became fascinated by and decided that we would kind of pursue this line of inquiry. The sea ceases and thus it sufficeth us. Try again, ready? The sea ceases and thus it sufficeth us. One more time. The sea ceases. So the way we worked generally was that we had PhD students, MA students and BA students engage on different levels of the project. So we had PhD students running workshops with um, the young resident builders on the residency week. Um, we had uh, MA students working on research they had conducted around housing, the brick fields, our built environment, and they created a range of performances around that and we had BA students designing devised piece around housing and around their, their own experiences of dwelling. It's made me realise that like there's a lot of difference between how the area is now and how it was back then. But I think that thinking about housing uh, in general, it's, it's, it's very broad and it's very universal, like the issues that people face and the issues that we all encounter in our local areas surrounding, you know, gentrification, people like eviction, um, people being pushed out of their hometowns. Um, it is something that's happened where I'm from, um, and then especially living in Stratford, um, being so kind of close, and I feel like it's um, this kind of like super commercial breed of gentrification with the Westfields and the Olympic Park that uh, it's glaring. It's so much more glaring than I've ever seen anywhere else, I think. I used to live in Forest Gate in what I can only describe as the most amazing house that I've ever lived in during my life. My when mom and I started in my whole family caught their door and the boiler was broken and the heat and never worked. So the council would hardly fix it every time we requested. So we'd have to double up with more jumpers, wrap ourselves in more clothes just to keep warm. Three bedrooms. And just snuggle together four to beds, share the warmth. Five bodies. Four walls. Two floors. One bowl of frosty. view from the back room. One spoon. One Every lucky, late night, we would come to watch the sunset, so me and my mum. We would just sit there crack. with the sun caressing our faces in the wall. and the warmth from it. I don't dare look away. It was such a sight to behold. It just doesn't it feel like beautiful. Home. And no matter how much I think about it, no matter how much I dream, I know that I could never rebuild what I had in Forest Gate. There's a bit of force, you know, with a bit of force. Last summer I went down to Cornwall. I met the Brickfield team um, led by the artist Rosanna Martin um, and I took part in a brick firing with them.
We stayed up um, for 48 hours firing this beautiful beehive kiln they'd built that summer with John Osborne, the last man to fire the last beehive kiln making bricks in Cornwall. I became really excited about the idea of what would happen if we took some of these amazing skills and processes and took them back to East London. So clay and putting them into the truck so we could all just have a go doing a little bit of that. Your red apron from is it? but I think it provided a great opportunity for people to do things together and to really, all of us were learning something new. None of us knew how to make a brick to start, properly expert. So actually learning something new together and sharing that knowledge and sharing that experience has been a really sort of a well-being activity almost. It's been really um, positive. Learning to build stuff is one of those motor skills with hands that I can only ever want to do more of. Learning to work with fabrics, learning to work with wood, learning to work with metal, and learning to work with clay, and then ends up being bricks, is one of those skills that I think that you can only feel empowered. I don't know, it's been a really good time. I think we've all enjoyed ourselves. And with bricks, there's so many different connotations. You kind of pay more attention to the buildings now. The question then, overall, becomes about ownership. The ownership of labour, the ownership of housing, the, the product, the brick is a product. But it can also signify individualism, possessive individualism, the right to enclose ourselves off into these private spaces that then make us very isolated entities and isolated societies who don't need to think about the interdependence actually of how housing is spread around equally to everybody else. So property and housing is not just a question of shelter, it's a question of the commoditization of housing. It's not just like a one person thing, it's, it's a whole community that comes together to do this. Thinking of it in terms of like shelter and like how all of that like comes together, like it, it really, I just see it sort of like this knowledge that gets passed down from generation to generation and it, this feels like part of that.